Kunoichi, my personal main and an early fan favorite in DNF Duel. Defined by the devs as a traps type character with an early intermediate level of difficulty. Unique to Kuno is her ability to double jump and her burning stigma which sticks a time bomb on enemies hit by the end of any of her flame attacks. Kunoichi's speed and aerial options make her a highly mobile character with varied methods of approaching opponents as well as controlling space in neutral. Although her strikes don't have very good range, her quick attacks allow you to put lots of pressure on opponents, giving them very little time to react. Another minor drawback is that to be truly safe against opponents, you need to end block strength with MP skills, which gives the opponent wide health, giving lots of characters access to some powerful conversions that they can use to beat you with the neutral. But overall, she's a character with lots of strengths that outweigh the few flaws. For in-depth and detailed information on frame data, you can check out dustloop.com, which is always being updated with the latest info. Kuno has great basic attacks for close range pressure. She doesn't have anything plus on block, but they're still good enough to bully opponents by poking with her standing A and threatening either the throw or the frame trap. To frame trap, you can delay the canceling of the move until right before it ends, and you can catch an opponent who thought you were finishing the string and try to get their attacks out. Her air attacks are also quick and great for air to air checks, leading into combos. The S attack by itself is Flame Cut, which you'll typically chain into both in block pressure and for most hit confirms. It hits twice, giving you all the time in the world to confirm into combo. Down in S is Rising Cut, which is a decent anti-air, and you can get tricky with it in block pressure. Forward S and Jumping S throughout kunais, which are very good mid to full screen projectiles. But it's unsafe up close, even if it hits. Back in S is your teleport attack with two different versions. Normally it goes a set distance, but when the opponent is marked with stigma, it tracks them and can be used to set up a safe jump on some characters when timed with the rising animation after they're knocked down. Down S while you're in the air, the flying squirrel attack is mostly a combo tool but has a few applications in neutral. For the specials, they can all be charged to increase damage, frame advantage, number of hits, reduce MP costs, just overall they become better moves. The rate of charging is sped up dramatically when you enter awakening mode. First you have neutral MS which gives you a flamethrower that can end block pressure safely and is a true block string when following up neutral S. The charge version is actually plus on block. Forward MS is the dreaded flame tornado that kinda just says screw neutral, hold this block string, it can be rolled if timed well but since it's independent of you, you have all the control over how the answers to this situation play out. It can also be used mid combo to pick up grounded opponents. You can charge it up to send it full screen. Back MS summons a toad that hits on the way down and spits up a massive fireball. You'll use this often in combos and it's also a cheeky neutral tool since it doesn't go away even if you're hit. The charge version tracks and lands directly on the opponent unless they're too high up in the air. Jumping MS fixes you in your vertical place and throws flaming kunai down while still allowing you to perform actions after it. This can be abused in certain matchups where the opponent doesn't have enough tools to account for every option that you can throw out. Charged up, it throws down even more kunai. Down MS is your DP, and it's decent for reversal purposes. It's only invulnerable on the ground, where you get one explosive jump to hit the opponent with, then you launch into the air spitting a fireball. Opponents can block the launch and roll through to punish you very easily. This is a move that you'll just have to learn the best timings for to use effectively. It's really good for jump-ins that are hard to anti-air, but there'll be times where you see that the DP doesn't really interact with moves like you would expect. Now with the basic attacks out the way, for the bread and butter combos, we'll start off with light and work towards something kind of difficult but with very good payoff in terms of damage and setup. The general idea is you always want a combo to end with an MS move that marks the opponent, so just to get the idea you can try this. Simple and helps you understand the objective. You can even just do this if your brain is a little discombobulated starting out and you realize the hit confirm a little too late. Just autopilot into this combo and you will at least get the knockdown with the insignia on the opponent. And now we're going to add in more specials. So this showcases how mid combo you can use an MS flame attack on an opponent marked with stigma and it will detonate mid combo allowing you further extension. The toad summon can be tricky at first. You want to make sure you sneak in a quick dash to make sure the down B connects. You actually have a lot of time to do this. Summon a toad in practice and hold forward so you can see that you're active a bit before it's obvious you can move out of the animation. And once you've got that down, ending the combo is pretty easy. Once you hit them with the flamethrower, you can immediately charge up another one. And after they're knocked down, quickly dash and jump in for a safe jump so you can either hit them or block their reversal move if they use one. In the corner, you can loop flamethrowers for one of the easier combos to perform. Ending corner combos with a high pop-up flamethrower gives you a safe jump against most characters' DPs. 
The timing can get kind of tight with the ones with the faster DPs, though, so watch for that. When you get the hang of recognizing mid-combo explosions, you can start freestyling and delving into the harder combo routes, as well as pivoting to the high damage routes using the tornado to secure kills instead of getting the knockdown for more pressure. Anytime a stigma pops mid-combo, the opponent is hard knocked down from wherever they are vertically, and you can OTG them with a full charge tornado. Then just pile on damage to secure the kill. Hitting these two flying squirrels in this combo helps you auto time the charged up flamethrower since the moment that you touch the ground you can begin charging up the attack. It can be overwhelming at first trying to figure out what combos to use when, but with experience playing this character you will eventually get the hang of when you need to route into whichever combo. And these combos should let you get the basics down to familiarize yourself with the character's game plan while still winning a few matches. Once you have some experience, again, you can seek out the optimal routes and practice them to really style on people. So actual matches with Kunoichi are very matchup dependent. Some characters don't have answers for your space control so you can abuse it. While other characters are much better at zoning and you'll have to strike a balance of zoning and making your way in to get into close range where you can truly shine. Characters that lack good reversal options are absolute food for you most of the time. They don't have any answers for the constant pressure that you can put them under and the variety of ways in which you can do it. For those that do have good reversals, understand the limits of them and abuse the ranges that they can cover. Characters with huge range on their normal attacks, like Vanguard and Crusader, typically have slower frame data for their basic attacks, so you can put extra focus on abusing them with frame traps to get away with resetting pressure on them for free since they can't challenge you and you can make them really pay for bad attempts. Be sure to remember that full screen spacing in most matchups gives you the ability to fully charge Toad and Tornado to totally skip neutral, get in, and dominate. And to end off with a strong tip that's a little past the beginner advice, pay attention to your white health. Using conversion off of your full screen projectiles makes the pressure twice as threatening, and you can catch some insane pickups off of lucky hits with things like shurikens. And that about covers everything for Kunoichi starting out. Hopefully this guide was helpful. See you next time.